Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 622. How your breast and thyroid fight over iodine. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about a mineral that is one that we hardly ever talk about, especially as physicians, to our patients, and that is iodine. Iodine is an essential mineral that we get from seafood and seaweed, and we can get it from the ground where in millions and millions of years ago we had an ocean over the, our uh, the terroir, the ground that we walk on, your gra- the ground dirt still has iodine in it. And you can get that from growing things in iodine-rich um, uh, dirt. So iodine isn't everywhere. They found that iodine is not in the ground or the groundwater of the Midwest of the United States. What does that do? Well, the reason that's important is because iodine is vital to many things in your body, but two things that are obvious, to women's breasts and to the thyroid of both men and women. Thyroid uses iodine in the actual hormone, and your breasts require iodine to grow and to be healthy and to not get fibrocystic disease, not get lumpy cystic kind of breasts, and to be healthy. So... One of the most important jobs for, um, for us as doctors and you as a patient is to hear that you do need iodine. It needs to be in your multivitamin. And if you live in the Midwest, you most probably need iodine um, as an extra supplement. The only iodine uh, supplement that I know of is called Iodorol. And it is inexpensive. You can get it almost anywhere. We sell it at the office to be convenient for our patients, but you can get it on Amazon or anywhere supplements are sold. Iodorol has two different kinds of iodines in it, which is perfect for human consumption. And usually just one 12.5 milligram tablet is enough to give you the iodine that you need. If you have fibrocystic breasts or if you have uh, a hypothyroid condition, then you may need more than just one of those tablets a day. But that would be something that you could talk to your doctor about and get an iodine level and see if you need to have more than the um, required 12.5 milligrams. But this is more interesting and more um, complicated than just saying, oh yeah, you need to take iodine. The reason the Midwest, I think it's kind of interesting to go back and see why we have problems in different parts of our very large country. And most of it has to do with geography and and what are the land mass of the United States has uh, been subjected to during uh, the growth of the um, growth of the world and the and the earth. Basically, the last major um, event that happened to the United States was when the glaciers came all the way down through Missouri, where I'm located, and they, so they froze the ground all the way down, and then as they came back up to Canada and above Canada, north of Canada, they actually scraped the topsoil off. And that topsoil had been um, subjected to an ocean over it, in the past, and the growing of, um, of kelp, seaweed, uh, actually captures iodine from the water and actually concentrates it. So seaweed has very high concentrations of iodine. And the ground that was, that was below these oceans also has a high concentration of iodine. Well, the Midwest would have been um, 
still wealthy in iodine, except that the glaciers scraped off the topsoil and took it back to Canada. So all of our iodized uh, ground uh, and th any kind of soil that we grow uh, plants in or vegetables or, or fruit in doesn't have iodine in it. This gives us the um, nickname of the goiter belt. And a goiter is something that you don't see very often because doctors treat it, but a goiter is, is a very large mass around your neck, right where your thyroid is. Your thyroid is right above, I didn't wear the right dress for this, but right above your collarbone. It looks like a butterfly and it has a little isthmus, which is like a little bridge right across the, the uh, trachea area where your uh, trachea, which is where you, what you breathe through, is. So basically, uh, the, uh, the iodine is concentrated in, in your thyroid, and it is used by your thyroid. So um, when we look at the fact that we need iodine, if we don't have it, we get this very enlarged thyroid. And it puts pressure on our windpipe, and it puts pressure on our esophagus, makes it feel difficult to swallow. That's one of the symptoms of having a goiter or an enlarged thyroid. So um, the Midwest from Ohio to the Rocky Mountains and down to about Ar Arkansas is the goiter belt. And that's where in the 1800s we saw lots of people who had big masses in their neck. That is because physiologically what's happening there is that uh, when you can't make enough thyroid, which is a hormone that every cell in your body uses to actually turn on uh, the mitochondria to make you make energy out of your blood sugar. So it's very, it's vital to every cell's health. When um, you don't have enough uh, iodine to make the thyroid, the thyroid, uh, excuse me, the blood flows back to your pituitary the, and, and that's kind of the master of all hormones, the stimulator of all hormones. Your pituitary sits right between your eyes, and your pituitary gland sends out something called TSH, thyroid-stimulating hormone. When that is secreted, it goes through your bloodstream to your thyroid and tries to push it to make more thyroid. And it can sense when there is more thyroid, when you have a normal level, the TSH usually comes down. So what happens is the pituitary never gets enough thyroid. It never senses enough, so it keeps making the thyroid, stimulating the thyroid until it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, trying to make you balanced and to, to force the gland to make more iodine. The fact is, is if, excuse me, make more thyroid hormone. If you don't have iodine, you can't make thyroid hormone because iodine is vital to that hormone. If you think about it like... A, like Tinker Toys, the center um, of the Tinker Toy, the, the um, center of a hub of a wheel, would be uh, something that is a protein. It's an uh, amino acid called tyrosine. So it's part protein, and then it has either three iodines that are attached to it. That's T3, the thyroid hormone T3, or it has four iodines stuck around that molecule to make that hormone. So you can see how vital iodine is to, to making that hormone, and you can see the response of your body is to keep pushing the gland to make more thyroid, and so the gland gets big. So the answer to that is to give people iodine. And um, when we started uh, fortifying foods, which I believe was in the 50, 1950s, we started adding um, vitamin D to milk, we started adding uh, other vital and important uh, vitamins and minerals to different foods and requiring it of the food makers to do that. We added iodine to bread. We added iodine to salt. You've heard of iodized salt. That's iodine with, with regular table salt. And uh, we added it to several other foods. Sometime in the early, um, between 1960 and 70, um, a study came out that said that the iodine um, supplementation was causing hyperthyroidism. That means too fast a thyroid. So when they got that one study, of course, they changed everything, and they took iodine out of 
uh, bread. They took it out of everything except salt. Now, that's okay if you live on the coast or you live in... Um, you live in the northwest or the northeast or if you live in the south because you have enough iodine in your food, you have enough iodine in your water, um, unless you flor fluorinate it, and then we'll talk about that too. But the iodine that you have is, is sufficient, but those of us in the Midwest needed to have the fortified iodine, and so there was much higher incidence of low thyroid and thyroid burnout because after a while, your thyroid gets pushed enough, it just stops working. So the, that happens, you also get thyroid nodules, you get thyroid cysts, you get thyroid cancer. So all of these things can flow from just a simple lack of iodine. Why they haven't seen the research in the recent past that shows that we need iodine and we should have it in our food, um, I don't know. I can't explain that. But I can say that since I live in the middle of the goiter belt, I see a lot more hypothyroidism um, due to lack of iodine than somebody who has a practice in Boston or LA. So that is, it's much more common for me to have to take care of people who have low thyroids. Well, um, I was reading a medical article and it came across my desk and it, it talked about the fact that not only do we not have enough iodine for our thyroids, but we don't have enough iodine for our breast tissue. And that makes total sense because women have a much higher rate of low thyroid and that is because we not only suck up the iodine for our thyroid, but we suck up the iodine for our breasts. So if you think about women uh, or girls developing into women, say you're in a, um, a low iodine uh, area of the country and you're taking um, no extra iodine except what's in iodized salt, and then your mother says, oh, I think I'll just use salt from the Himalayas. Well, there's no added added iodine there. So now you're getting no iodine. And you have fluorinated water. Fluorinated water is great for your teeth, deadly for your thyroid. Fluor fluoride is, um, if you've studied uh, chemistry, it's in the same line as iodine. And it is what I call stickier. Basically, it will attach to your, to your cells that need the iodine it will attach instead. It's like a, a, a pretender. It pretends to be iodine, attaches to the, um, to the, uh, uh, excuse me, the amino acid, and then the thyroid goes out to take care of your cells, but it can't work because it has fluoride on it and not iodine. So fluorinated water is, is truly bad for our thyroids and because of that, bad for our breasts. So... So say you're this young girl going through Menarc and you already have a, a low level of iodine and you have fluorinated water, so you have no iodine and basically the fluoride is, is hobbling your uh, thyroid hormone. Then you start to get breasts. Well, breasts require iodine. So your breasts start growing and they... and it literally, your breasts steal iodine away from your thyroid. So when, when we see girls in their uh, teens, we often see low thyroid. And it is because their breasts are using it, and they're using it faster because they're growing, and therefore their thyroid is being starved of iodine. Uh, what we should be doing is treating the thyroid and the breast with iodine, what we are doing is, is most likely giving vitamin E for fibrocystic disease, taking them off caffeine for fibrocystic disease, and giving them thyroid hormone or Synthroid. That it would be better if we backed up and just put iodine in our foods or required it at a higher level in multivitamins, but I don't think that's how um, government or the powers that uh, run medical uh, groups like American College of OBGYN or the American College of Internal Medicine think. So there are lots of studies, however, that document this. Now, now we have all these young girls who have insufficient iodine 
And then we have a lot of young girls that develop low thyroid. Well, the thyroid after a certain point doesn't come back when you give uh, that girl iodine and you have to treat for life. So thyroid is, is necessary for you to live. So you need to have your thyroid and you need to have it as long as you live. If your thyroid basically stops working, it's not coming back except in one instance. So if you're young and you get hypothyroidism, you'll be taking um, thyroid the rest of your life. If you are older, like in your 40s and 50s, that's another time when women get hypothyroid uh, hypothyroidism. If it happens then, then you're most likely going to have to take thyroid the rest of your life. Iodine won't do it. And the third, the third um, increase in the um, in thyroid hypothyroidism is right after a pregnancy, because right so the your breasts are enlarged. You're using a lot of iodine. You're you have to speed up your thyroid to take care of the um, metabolism metabolism of you and the baby and the baby growing. And so after that, when you are recovering, oftentimes there's not enough iodine for you to breastfeed and to have a normal thyroid so the thyroid dies. If you can, it's very possible that during the first year after this happens, after you have delivered a baby, within that first year you'll have to take thyroid. After that, it's very possible that your thyroid will, will recover. Hopefully that, that will, or probably that'll be from increasing the iodine. It may just be from you getting healthier and eating more and, and recuperating your body. After you've had a baby, you have depleted your body of everything. You've given that baby your calcium. You've given that baby your uh, magnesium. You've given it all of your uh, minerals, all of your vitamins. You need to replace all of those and replenish your body with those and good foods to replenish your tissues so that they can grow, uh, like your muscles can grow back and you can get back into, into shape. Now, um, when we're looking at these three incidences, what you heard me say was young women, women going before menopause, and then women who have just had a baby. That's because very few men have low thyroid. It, it is partially because men don't have breasts. And breasts take away what thyroid is made out of. So that is one of the reasons. There are other genetic reasons. But that's one of the reasons that um, we have completely different histories in terms of um, th developing hypothyroidism. Men still get thyroid cancer. Men still get hyperthyroidism. It's just that the hypothyroidism is not as um, is not a, the incidence is low in men and very high in women, and very high in women in the Midwest. It just doesn't seem to affect the men um, in our area as much as it does women. And once again, I'll have to blame blame the breasts. So there's always this. There's always this um, kind of battle going on between the two, um, two necessary organs that we have, and they're always competing for the iodine. So giving, the, um, the, giving yourself some iodine is one of the ways to stop the competition. If you have enough of the iodine, then your breasts are happy. They don't get cystic. It usually takes a, at least a year for after you've started iodine to make your breasts less cystic and less lumpy. Um, but the thyroid responds faster when you give iodine back to a patient who has low thyroid and low iodine. So that, those are um, key pieces of information. It's a women's disease. It's more common in the Midwest. It is, um, it is if you catch it early, you can treat it with iodorol um, and then if you uh, think about it, you should have a, I guess, a cleaner on your, wa on your um, drinking water and cooking water so that you don't have fluoride in the water that you and your family drink. Um, if there's really good information about iodine and all the important uses and needs that we have for iodine in our bodies, um, one of the biggest researchers on this subject is Dr. Brownstein. 
and he has a book called Iodine, Why You Need It, Why You Can't Live Without It. And it's, it is very informative, easy to read, not written for doctors, it's written for patients. And if you have more questions about iodine, your breast, thyroid, then you should take a look at that or you can look into my book, The Secret Female Hormone. Um, and that also has information about iodine, the breasts, and, and uh, your thyroid. But it is a very important mineral and one that we should have um, we should replace and we should keep an eye out for our daughters as they're, as they're maturing and look for this enlarged thyroid in their net for that if, and see if they have it, take them to the doctor if they do. And also for, for girls who have fibrocystic disease, they may need to uh, replace their iodine during that stage of life to protect their thyroids. I think probably everybody in the Midwest needs to have some form of iodine replacement since we don't have it in our water or food. So now you learned something about um, a mineral you didn't even know about, <laughs> even know you needed. So please join us next week. We will be back with you and give you some more information. Hopefully this will be all be usable for your life and you can get yourself healthier by uh, spending 20 minutes with me. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BiobalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BiobalanceHealth.